Hi guys, this is Assignment Expert channel and today we are going to top up our physical section by one more video. This will be the answer on our subscribers question. We show you a typical problem which covers the basic concepts and notions of the simplest physics section. Mechanics. Let's begin. Consider the following problem. Two balls are thrown from the same point at the same time, one vertically upwards with initial speed of 25 meters per second and other vertically downwards with the speed of 15 meters per second. Our task is to find velocities and the distance within these two balls after 5 seconds from the moment of the throw. To begin with, let's analyze given situation. As we are interested in the dynamics of the ball only after the throw, we absolutely don't care who threw them up and how. It might be a human or a monkey. We don't care. The only important information for us are initial velocities of the balls V01 and V02. Next, as in our problem is not stated about any additional forces which may influence the ball's flight, the only force which acts on them is gravity. The gravitational force is expressed by the free fall acceleration g, which is, as usual, is directed downwards. As you know, the classical equations which uniquely determine the velocity and position of the particle in the gravitational field are the following two equations. By the way, these equations are derived from, from the second Newton's law. I will show you someday how to do it. Consider these equations. The first equation is the dependence of velocity on time. It consists of two terms. The first term is initial velocity of the balls, which is a constant quantity and is given in our statement. The second term, which is a product of the free fall acceleration g and time t, gives us an accelerated part of our velocity. The second equation consists of the three terms. The first term is initial distance from the starting point. As you can see, in our case, this initial distance is zero. So let's keep it in mind and don't try this term anymore. The second term is a linear contribution to the distance and the third is accelerated part. As you can see, these equations are in vector form. So in general, we have to consider them component-wise. But in fact, we, think, we see that our balls move along only one special direction up and down along the axis which we have marked as y. Therefore, our equation has only one non-zero component. It's a y component. To find this component, we have to project both equations on the y-axis. And after that, our problem becomes one-dimensional. But at this step, guys, you have to be very careful and don't forget to take into account the relative direction of the y-axis and all of the quantities which are going to be projected. If any quantity holds the opposite direction from the y-axis, it will be projected with a negative sign. It's a rule. So, to find velocities v1 and v2 of t, you have to project the first equation on the y-axis. Now let's discuss how to find the distance d between our two balls. It can be easily understood with the help of our picture. Look at it. You can see that our red ball flies upwards and our green flies downwards. So after some time t, the distance to our red ball will be h1 of t. At the same time, the distance to the green ball will be h2 of t. So, it's easy to understand that the distance between these two balls will be simply a sum of these two distances. For the future needs, I will write it down. d of t equal h1 of t plus h2 of t. Now, it became clear what for we need the second equation. It's simple to find this distance. Now, let's find the numerical values of v1 and v2 of t and discuss how to project velocity and the distance on our y-axis. First, consider the red ball. Let's first find the first velocity. From the picture, you can see that initial velocity of the red ball is directed along the y-axis. 
but the free-fall acceleration in the second term holds the opposite direction. So in projection, it will be with the negative sign. About the direction of V1 of t, which is the velocity of the red ball, we don't know anything. I mean that after some time t from the moment of the throw, our red ball may still fly upwards, as well as because of the gravitational force action stop and start to fall down. So, to project this velocity with positive or negative sign is just a matter of our agreement. Let's suppose that our red ball will be still flying upwards and direct the first velocity along the y-axis. So, in projection, it will be positive. If we are wrong in choosing all this direction after numerical calculation, we will get the negative velocity and it will be a signal for us that we have made a mistake. So, now it's easy to write down the equation for the first velocity. Positive V1 of t is equal V01 minus GT. Similarly, you can see that the equation for the distance consists of the same terms. So, it's easy to write down the equation for the distance. Suppose, of course, that H1 of t is positive. H1 of t equals V01t minus g t squared divided by 2. Now consider our green ball. From the picture, you can see that not only the free fall acceleration, but also the initial velocity of it holds the opposite direction from the y-axis. Moreover, we see that the velocity v2 of t holds the same direction. We know that because the force of gravity acts downwards on our green ball, and there are no other forces which may change its motion. So, after some time t from the moment of the throw, our, our green ball will remain falling down. The equation for it will be minus v2 of t is minus v02 minus gt. Similarly, h2 of t is negative, so negative h2 of t is equal v02, negative v02 t minus g t squared divided by 2. Now, let's find the velocity v1 and all the other quantities at the time, which is equal to 5 seconds. V1 uh, at the 5 seconds is 25 minus 9.8 pointed by 5. We get minus 24 meters per second. Indeed, you can see that we got the negative velocity for our red ball. It means that we are mistaken with choosing a direction of the velocity and in fact after 5 seconds from the moment of the throw, our red ball will be falling down. Let's calculate the distance. The distance at 5 seconds is equal 25 pointed by 5 minus 9.8 25 divided by 2 is equal to 2.5 meters. Similarly, it's easy to compute the second velocity at the same time and it will be 64 meters per second. And the distance h2 at 5 seconds is 197.5 meters. Now it's easy to find the distance d of t. Let's use this formula and write down the distance up to 5 seconds from this row is the sum of these two distances. If you add these numbers, you get 200 meters. Now our problem is solved. We found velocities and the distance between these two balls. But as a bonus, 
I am going to show you the graphical behavior of velocities and the distances on time. Moreover, I will teach you the second method of obtaining these velocities. If you are interested in it, please stay with us, subscribe to our channel and go to the second part of this video. See you!